Hey guys, today I'm uploading the video what I eat in a day. I used to eat once one meal in a day, a very big meal. Um, I eat for about one to two hours, and in the morning, and I only eat once for the rest of the day. I will ne- not eat, and uh, it's uh, very unhealthy. I have already changed my diet. I will eat three meals. Or even four, five, six a day. How eat whenever I get hungry? I will not eat a lot to make my stomach feel uncomfortable. And、uh, I will also now I eat more carbs.、Uh, I do not afraid of carb. Carb is very important in our diet. Okay, that's that's just my disclaimer. I always change.、Uh, I have already. They already changed, but that's I filmed this footage, so why not share with you? And I will share my favorite paragraph from book I recently read, "The Journey to the End of the Night," from Celine. He is a French writer. I like like him very much. Okay. Um, first paragraph. Because I have a word. Okay, let's begin. Oh, welding a club is fatiguing in the long run. The white man's hearts and minds, on the other hand, have been crammed full of the hope of becoming rich and powerful, and that costs nothing. Absolutely nothing. We have heard enough about Egypt and the tighter tyrant in the art of squeezing the last ounce of labor out of a two-legged animal. Those primitive actions were pretentious incompetence. Did they ever think of calling their slave? Massa, or letting him vote now and then, or giving him his newspaper, and especially had they thought of sending him to war, to work off his passions. After twenty centuries of Christianity, as I personally can bear witness, your modern man simply can't control himself when a regiment passes before his eyes. This. Paragraph just describe modern society kill kill individuality and、uh, yeah people people didn't even realize bec like they find a job some people just like their job and、uh, they are lucky people and I think like me. When I'm working, I do not feel my self identity identify with my work. I feel like a machine, a part of the machine. I feel dead. Okay, another paragraph. Accordingly, I decided to keep a close watch on myself from now and learn to keep my mouth scrupulously. Scrupulously shut to conceal my longing to get away. In short, to prosper if possible, and come what may in the service of the company. Perduria, not a moment to lose. Confidential agent of Perdulur, he took care of. Liaison between the administration and the business community, an indispensable function. Although the two lived in a state of permanent competition and、uh, hostility, I wonder if my young friends at my company who. Isolate between aggressiveness and extreme depression. weren't simply jealous of me. Their idea, ideal, idiocy, which is all they could call their own, varied with the amount of liquor 
that had ingested, the letters that had received, and the amount of hope that had lost during the day. As a general rule, the more moribund they felt, the more they swaggered, the strutted. If they would be ghosts, their gall would have no no bounds. Basically, the writer described his his companion, his colleague in Africa, and、uh, yeah, that's basically what I experience when I'm working in the city or working in a company. And、uh, the writer also says, this person at the hospital was it was the only place in the whole. Colony where you could feel forgotten, safe from the people outside the bosses, a vacation from slavery. That was the main thing. Anyway, the only happiness within my reach. In the Queen language. Linguished them to the maggots, where they were still in the hospital. The chaplain would simply close their eyes at about six in the evening, and four senegalese would carry the bloodless husks to the plot of red clay beside the church in Fort Gono. That church, incidentally, was so hot under its tin roof that you never went there twice. More tropical than the tropics. To stand up in that church, you have to pant like a dog. That's the way it goes. You can't deny it. Men have a hard time doing all the demanded of them. Butterflies in their youth, maggot at the end. If anyone asks you, tell them you don't know. But since you seem eager to learn, let me. Give you some very good advice before it's too late. Don't worry about the company any more than the company worries about you. If you can run as fast as the company screws its employees, I can tell you right now that you are due to win the Grand Prix. Grand Prix. So be thankful that I'm leaving you a little cash and ask no more. As for the stock, if it's true that the director told you to take charge of it, tell him there isn't any left. And that's that. If he won't believe you, who cares? They take us all for thieves anyway, so it won't make any difference to public opinion if, for once, we get a little something out of it. And besides, don't worry. The director knows more about financial monkey shines than anybody. So why contradict him? That's my opinion. What's yours? Everybody knows that for a man to come here, he has to be prepared to kill his father and mother. Am I right? Now was the time to make quick tracks back to Fort Gano, retrace my steps, try to explain my conduct and the circumstances of the present disaster. I hesitated, nor for long. Nothing can be explained. The world only knows how to do one thing: to roll over and kill you, as a sleeper kills his fleas. That would be a stupid way to die. I say to myself, to let myself be crushed like everybody else. To put your trust in men is to get yourself killed a little. In the last half century, the shining example of this biodurant has led any number of young people to choose a scientific career, and the scientific career have produced as many failures as a conservatory. After a certain number of years of failure. Scientists turn out to be pretty much alike. In the mass graves of the great 
tobacco, a doctor of medicine is as good as bricks to Rome. The only difference is that they don't take the bus at exactly the same time of day. That's all. The water lapped against the bank where the fishermen were, and I sat down to watch them. I really was in no hurry at all, no more than they were. I would pretty well come to the point, the age, you might say, when a man knows what he's losing with every hour that passes, but he hasn't yet built up the wisdom to pull up sharp on the road of time. And anyway, even if you did stop, you wouldn't know what to do without the frenzy for going forward that has possessed you and won your admiration ever since you were young. Even now, you are not as pleased with your youth as you used to be, but you don't yet dare admit in public that youth may be nothing more than a hurry to grow old. In the whole of your absurd past, you discover so much that's absurd, so much deceit and uh, credulity that it might be a good idea to stop being young this minute, to wait for youth to break away from you and pass you by, to watch it going away, receding in the distance, to see all the vanity run your hand through the empty space it has left behind. Take a last look at it, and then start moving. Make sure your youth has really gone, and then calmly, all by yourself, cross to the other side of time to see what people and things really look like. Now and then, the sound of step rose up to me, and the echo came in louder and louder, drowning then dying away. Silence. I looked out again to see if anything was happened across the way. Nothing was happening except inside me, still asking myself the same question. I was so tired from walking and finding nothing that I finally fell asleep in my coffin, my private night. Why kid ourselves? People have nothing to say to one another. They all talk about their own troubles and nothing else. Each man for himself, the earth for us all. They try to unload their unhappiness on someone else when making love. They do their damnedest, but it doesn't work. They keep it all, and then it starts all over again, trying to find a place for it. You are pretty, madam, they say, and life takes hold of them again until the next time. And then they try the same little gimmick. You are very pretty, madam. And in between, they boast that they have succeeded in getting rid of their unhappiness. But everyone knows it's not true, and they have simply kept it all to themselves. Since as a little game, you add, you get uglier and more repulsive as you grow older. You can't hope to hide your unhappiness, your bankruptcy. And longer. In the end, your features are marked with the hideous grim grims that takes twenty, thirty years. Oh, sorry, hideous grimers, gr- grims, grimers, grimers. That takes twenty, thirty years or more to climb from your belly to your face. That's all man is good for. That's that and no more. The grimers that he takes a whole lifetime to compose. The grimers a man would need to express his true soul without losing any of it is so heavy and complicated. Complicated that he doesn't always succeed in completing it. In the two years he spent there, he hadn't gone very far into American life. Still, he would be touched in a way by their brand of music, where they too try to get away from the weight of routine and the crushing misery of having to do the same thing every day. While it's playing, they can shuffle about for a while with a life that has no meaning. Bears on both sides. 
on the ocean. Thoughts have their Sunday too. Come to think of it, we have never. We are even more dazed than usual. Here we sit, empty, bewildered, contented. We have nothing to talk about because nothing happens to us anymore. We are too poor. Maybe life is sick of us. Why not? Sunday ideas, gentleman's idea, have come over him. I was afraid to argue, to insinuate that no one could entrust his motor car to a man with a mug of the impoverished murderer. That, with or without a uniform, he would always look too peculiar. On Sunday, everybody gets go. That their signs, their feelings, their impatience, human dignity goes on a Sunday spree, holiday spree. After a whole day of alcoholic freedom, the slaves are stirring. There's no holding them. They sniff, they snort, they clunk their chains. I saw very well, and I wasn't surprised. It only made me sad, a little sadder than before. Anything you can say to dissuade people in a case like that is bound to be feeble. Has life been kind to them? So. Why would they take pity on anybody? What for? What had other people to them? Has anybody ever been known to go down to hell, to take someone else's face? No, they send other people down. That's all.